Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 9, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. It is a full moon week as we start this week right out of the gate on Sunday for most people. Although some people may be experiencing this phenomenon on Monday, depending where you are on the planet, we are going to have a full moon in the sign of Leo. Now, part of what makes this full moon distinct is that it's happening in a fire sign, a sign of drama, yes, but also confidence and performance. It has to do with owning your own light and allowing yourself to shine especially bright. The fact that Mars is going to be speaking in supreme harmony with this full moon in a type of alignment that astrologers call a trine, well, this suggests easy passion, easy direction as well, and the full embodiment of an energy of adrenaline that may very well be available to us now. You know, the sign of Leo loves love. That is one of the characteristics of this time. And a lot of us may be craving or truly wanting to have an experience in romance, an experience in feeling special in some way. Now it is often romantic experiences that get our adrenaline going and yes, help us to feel special or allow us to feel as if we're letting someone else know that they are special. But what that actually means, what it means to be special and be in your light in your own right, well, that is very uniquely defined by each one of us. Well, wherever it is that you feel that you shine brightest and you feel like you're at your best, your most confident best in particular, it may very well be that very area that is summoned for your attention and for your presence at this time. Leo is the energy of the spotlight and the spotlight shining. And it is now that all of us are going to be asked to allow that spotlight to come on us. Now, collectively, this is going to be a time of heightened celebrity. Leo is the sign and the energy of celebrity at that. Right now, Mars is in its last full week of moving through a sign that is also a fellow fire sign, but it's a sign of Sagittarius, which has to do with what is exotic, what we consider to be foreign to us. And so we can see that it is going to be these very things that otherwise would be other, whether it is art, whether it is celebrities uh, who may shine especially bright at this time or be getting our attention. It can be at this time that certain music that is seen to be uh, of different cultures is what is getting a lot of play right about now. And also I would say, especially considering this full moon in Leo is happening, uh, right over the Oscar ceremony, well, I do think that uh, wherever it is that there's foreign films, foreign directors, foreign actors, well, what this energy says is that they may have that much more cosmic support for feeling as if their star is shining especially bright at this time. I do also think, since we're talking about the Oscars, uh, I think it's going to be a very fun ceremony. Uh, there very likely will be some uh, very interesting outfits okay outfits that get a lot of attention outfits that have multicultural influences in in them as well and it is going to be at this time that very likely there are going to be some reactions to what it is that is on display but that can also be a part of the fun i'm not seeing controversy necessarily with this energy but i am seeing a chance now to contemplate a little bit more deeply what it is that beauty is and how it is that we express it in new and fun ways. Now, the reason that I mentioned beauty in particular is because under the light of the full moon, Venus, newly in the sign of Aries, will be meeting Chiron in the sky. So this is energy we're starting the week with. So on the one hand, yes, we have all this attention on uh, what's famous, who's uh, got the light, who's got the spotlight on them. But then we also have Venus representing, on the one hand, style and fashion and how it is we want to dress, meeting Chiron. And art, especially at a time like this, can be especially healing. Chiron is not a planet. Chiron is an asteroid. And Chiron, when we think about it uh, from the Greek mythology, 
Chiron was uh, and is known as the wounded healer. So essentially, Chiron was a centaur, which meant he was half horse and half human. Part of what made him particularly distinct from other centaurs was that the entire front of his body was human, as opposed to other centaurs uh, like him who actually had their entire lower body as horse. And so what this meant was he was uh, more than just his animal instinct. Symbolically speaking, he was considered, when we look at the iconography here, he was considered to be especially elevated beyond just being guided by animal instincts. And he was known for his wisdom and his knowledge. He was known as a teacher to the gods. Uh, and he was uh, a tutor and a teacher to many in the uh, celestial sphere. So one day what happened was Mars uh, was having fun shooting arrows all over the place and accidentally hit Chiron in the thigh with one of his stray arrows. And Chiron was in so much pain, in so much pain for an extended period of time, a pain that would not go away, that the gods decided to make him into a constellation and thereby made him immortal. It was through his pain that he became immortal. Now, this is actually something I spoke about quite at length. I explored quite at length in the Chiron and Aries video. So I'll try to link to that in the description below if you want to understand uh, the symbolism a little bit more deeply. But what I find um, especially intriguing about the symbolism of Chiron is that it is through the thing that has hurt you, through moving through the thing that has hurt you, that you find uh, the kernel of, the source of what ultimately is energy of immortality. And I think this speaks to on the one hand, that because he was a teacher, uh, considered very wise, very knowledgeable in all kinds of areas in philosophy and medicine and otherwise, there was this understanding that when it is that you are willing to see your pain, acknowledge the things that are hurting you, and in some way move towards wisdom, not necessarily in spite of it, but to find a kernel of wisdom within it, well, that is where we touch on our own immortality. So this is looking at Chiron from a more philosophical perspective, but Chiron, if you think about it, the wounded healer, the word healer is there, right? Being a presence of healing in the world. And in this way, if you think about Chiron, what Chiron inspires us to do in our own individual charts is to take what otherwise has been painful to us and use it as a force, ultimately, to make us a force of healing in our own sphere of influence. So think about how representation and uh, whether that's in art, whether that's in clothing, whether that's in fashion, how it is that that can actually be a healing force in the world. We know that there is something very powerful that happens when you see yourself on screen. Uh, when you see your story or when you see your own representation on screen, there's something deeply meaningful about that. People feel seen as a result of seeing themselves. It's like you don't really know who you are until you see yourself. That is something uh, that actually Gabare Sibide said. How do you know you exist if you never see yourself? And I think that is so powerful. In the sign of Aries, simply the beingness right? Simply being yourself, being an individual, that can be a force of healing in the world. And how we express that in style, in art, in fashion, well, that is going to be very much in focus and how that connects to celebrity in particular as we start this week for the collective. Now, I would also say Venus is an energy of blessings, okay? Yes, Venus does bring her own brand of healing, but the ancients called Venus a lower benefic. So benefic means a uh, blesser. And so Jupiter is the higher benefic. And because Venus represents an energy of ease, of support, and of pleasure as well, there's a sense now that where it is that certain movies, certain roles, certain art um, is representative of uh, 
a story that ultimately speaks of healing. Well, it does look like those are going to have a little bit more of an edge at this time. Celebrity power is going to be very strong as well. Uh, and it is going to be uh, at a time like this that all of us are going to be invited to contemplate, to consider, to own the star that we are in our own right and what it means to live that. What is it that needs to heal within us so that we allow ourselves to step into our own unique star power. Now, here's the thing. It's a little secret I'm going to tell you about healing, right? You're never, ever really fully healed. That's my uh, controversial opinion here. And the reason I say that is because I truly believe that if you were enlightened, if you'd done your work and you're all healed and you're all good and you've mastered the lessons and the learning of the earth plane, there is no longer any reason to continue to be in this incarnation. You have, you know, reached nirvana, as uh, the Buddhists say. You've elevated above and beyond and you're ready to go on to whatever's next, the next planet, the next sphere, uh, the next phase of our uh, soul's evolution beyond the human, what uh, actually Gary Zuckov calls the earth school. So we evolve beyond the earth school. However, if you're here, it means there's more learning to do. And it also means there's more healing to do because ultimately, as Carl Jung said, we take on the work of healing so that we can truly become ourselves. That is the privilege of a lifetime, according to Carl Jung. And so, yes, if you're here, it means that there's some a uh, deeper layer, other angle of healing that you, and especially under a sky like this, may be ready to embrace more fully so that you can become that very force of healing in your own sphere of influence so that you can then turn around and be a healing force for others and be a healer in the world for others. I also think that part of living in this world, and especially in the modern world right now with so many uh, filtered images and Photoshop and things like that, it is very common for people to be critical of their own unique beauty uh, and how it is that they perceive they appear to others. Well, my sincere hope for all of us, especially with Venus meeting Chiron and this full moon in the sign of Leo, well, my sincere hope is that more and more of us are embracing our own unique beauty, are willing to bring healing to that critical part of us uh, within ourselves, and in so doing, allow ourselves to be more free of that critical voice, allow ourselves to be more healed of that part of us that may judge us, and instead to be truly present within ourselves. I think that is one of the great gifts that healing offers. It is the gift of being truly present for yourself and for your incredible life right now. There are a couple of more things to keep in mind with this week as we move towards the very end of the week. It is going to be Mars that moves to the very end of the sign of Sagittarius. This is what astrologers call an anorectic degree. And it means that the Sagittarian energy uh, meeting Mars in particular with Mars in the sign of Sagittarius, um, well, it heightens this energy that much more, but can also bring with it uh, some sense of frustration as well. And so for some people out there, this is going to represent a time when they are being asked to understand more what it is to think differently, to believe differently, to interact with people from different backgrounds than perhaps you're familiar with them before. This may also be a time when uh, more and more of us are considering what it means to be a world citizen. And I do think that there will be some people who are especially passionate about it at this time. What we do need to be careful for though is getting a little self-righteous and that can happen under this energy. And so whenever it is uh, that we may find ourselves, and it happens to the best of us, but you know, if you find yourself sort of uh, getting on a soapbox of any kind, especially as we get to the end of the week, that may be an opportunity for you or for us uh, to sort of take a moment and to contemplate and to consider what truths are subjective truths and what truths are uh, empirical and absolute. Now, if something is an absolute truth for you, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is empirically the truth. But I think that when it is that we're willing to at least acknowledge where our own opinions, our own perspectives, our own viewpoints 
ultimately are guiding what it is we're perceiving as true, well, I think that can go a really long way in ultimately helping us to understand each other better. The other thing to pay attention to as we get to the end of the week, Mercury will stand still in the sky. So this is important for a few reasons. One is early next week, Mercury will officially go retrograde. The Mercury retrograde season will begin. Right now, Mercury is moving through the sign of Pisces. And this isn't uh, exactly an energy where Mercury is its strongest. And so what that means is simply by Mercury being in the sign of Pisces, that can make it feel a little bit like we're in a Mercury retrograde already. You add to this Mercury standing still, well, that Mercury retrograde energy starts to feel especially high at this time. We are going to have a series of supportive alignments over the course of this Mercury retrograde season between Mercury and Uranus. And I love that. It's, it's fortunate. It's brilliant. It's insightful. But simply the fact that Mercury is in retrograde season in the sign of Pisces means that it is going to be a little bit of a doozy of a Mercury retrograde season. So this is going to be one of those moments where that mercurial retrograde energy is especially heightened. Whenever it is that a planet is gearing up to change directions, whenever it is that a planet appears to be standing still in the sky, its energies are thought to be especially heightened. In the sign of Pisces, well, it is a good idea uh, to consider and to contemplate where it is that you're ready to make a decision, where it is that maybe more information needs to come in, and to just take into account that where Mercury is now, this is where Mercury will return once we get to the end of March. And so what is transpiring now, especially at the end of the week, might look very different once we get to that place. And to be mindful of any commitments that you may make at this time, because what those commitments actually entail, what you think the outcomes may be, well, that could end up being very different as well once we get to the end of March. And so just like any good Mercury retrograde season, right? As they say, it's not necessarily thought to be the best time uh, to sign contracts or to make any kind of solid deals or plans, but it is a really great time to have another look to take a, another opinion, another perspective. And with Mercury in Pisces, even with those other perspectives, it's a good idea to wait this time out and to be open, to consider if there are other ways of doing things, if there is a need to go back over old ground at all. Well, this Mercury retrograde season is gonna point the way, but at least right now with Mercury standing still, the best way forward or the best way to go back well, I don't think that's going to be quite so clear. And as we're interacting with others, I would also say be patient, be gracious with others as we get to the end of the week. On the one hand, we've got this very strong Mars energy, which can indicate impatience. And then we've got this energy of heightened confusion with Mercury standing still in the sign of Pisces. And so what that tells me is with that uncertainty, with that confusion that we don't realize, with that sense of heightened emotion and impatient, well, the more gracious we can be to others, well, chances are that is when we start accessing some of the higher points of this energy. And the higher points are to consider more deeply and to reconsider what true compassion is towards ourselves and others. That is the higher understanding of this Mercury retrograde season. It's going to invite us to see ourselves more compassionately and to communicate with others more compassionately as well. What does that mean? Where is it that it's self-sacrificing in a way that isn't healthy? And where is it that there is a genuine need to bring love into a situation that may otherwise be quite tense. It is in harnessing love, especially as we get towards the end of the week, that not only will we cultivate a greater understanding that the sky is promising, but chances are we'll be invited to see things very differently than we did before, perhaps in ways that change us and what it is that is true for us in a way that can actually make us a whole lot better. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here, but I am going to say I do love that beautiful full moon as we are starting the week. 
I think the energy is high, it's dramatic, it's fabulous, okay? So the more it is that you wanna bring forward your most fabulous self and whatever that means for you, I would say absolutely do it, that's one. But on the other hand, be open to the fact that it may actually be very healing for you to embrace your own unique style or way or beingness of fabulous. We all have our own unique way of expressing Venus in the world. Venus is goddess of love, goddess of beauty, and you are an embodiment of that sacred energy as you are an embodiment of all the sacred energies that the planets represent and so much more. And that means that you yourself are Venus moving through the world. You yourself are a divine expression of beauty, of joy, of worthiness, of love for others, love for self as you move through this world. And my hope is at this time that whatever it is that needs to heal, whatever it is that needs to soothe so that you can truly embrace your unique beauty in the healthiest sense, well, my hope is that it is this full moon that not only inspires you, but helps you to feel that much more certain and comfortable in your right to own that divine expression of Venus that you are. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how the wonderful energy, not only of the full moon, but Venus meeting Chiron in the sky and so much more, well, how is it gonna to speak to you and your sign? Log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more all of this in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there now i launched last week just as mercury was entering or just before mercury entered shadow tried to get past that mercury retrograde uh, season starting but i launched this wonderful new uh, product that i've been working on for a long time with a company called cosmogram and that is reports written by me for you. And these reports and all the different sections took a long time to put together. Uh, it truly has been such a joy to work on. So here's what happened. The company uh, that I am doing this with, uh, Cosmogram, were really surprised and really overwhelmed by the response. So first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for your love, for your trust. I'm truly so grateful for it. It does mean so much to me. Um, it really was very unexpected how many people uh, did go to the website and want to generate these reports. And so it ended up making the website go kind of buggy. And that's unfortunate. And I'm so, so very sorry about that. It hasn't affected too many people. A very small percentage of people have found it frustrating uh, to either be directed and go through PayPal and uh, to have the coupon code work, the coupon code for 50% off uh, that is only supposed to be active until Valentine's Day. Uh, some people have found frustrations in having that coupon apply. And so there have been these little things happening. A very small percentage of people uh, who purchased it, if you were born during daylight savings times and just a couple of different cities, they might have found that the calculations might have been a little bit off. Now. A lot of these problems are solved or are being solved as we speak. And I'm so, so sorry uh, for this. I do know that the vast majority of people who have purchased this have had a wonderful experience. They've been able to get it, they get the download and they're very happy. There's been a very small percentage of people out there who have found that these different challenges have happened. And I am working with this company. I'm with them every day. I'm communicating with them every day. Uh, to resolve this and so please be patient with us and i am also going to see what i can do to get that coupon code extended for now it is only supposed to be active until valentine's day which is this week however uh, because it wasn't applying for a small number of people i want to see what i can do to make sure that as many people as possible get a chance to have uh, access to these reports at the introductory price of 50 percent off with the coupon code so again, you have my sincere apologies. Also, all of you and those of you who have your reports, but all of you who've purchased the reports, you have my absolute gratitude. 
thank you so much for your trust. It really um, has been such a powerful and, and just almost overwhelming to see how many people out there resonate with what it is I share and want to know how I would interpret their chart step by step. And so this really is me going through the different aspects in your chart, the different uh, placements of the planets in your chart, plus the ascendant, plus the midheaven, and describing to you uh, what it means, basically. So what does it mean if you have your midheaven in Aries? How does that speak to you? What does that mean for you? There's a, a me having written something there. And I did this with all of the sections and all of the signs and all of the aspects all together. I wrote 780 sections. So that's a lot. That took a lot of work, but it was um, you know, something I was so excited to do, something I dreamed of doing for such a long time. And so now it's coming together. And even with this little bit of blips for a very small percentage of out there, um, I'm just so very grateful for those of you who have uh, that trust in me to actually go through and purchase this. So thank you. Thank you so much. And if you have reached out to us, if you've reached out to Cosmogram, um, please do keep in contact and know that the hope is that this gets resolved very, very quickly. I'm hoping for this full moon as we start this week, the issues are resolved, but I will definitely keep you guys posted on social media. Uh, one of the places I'm most active on social media is actually my Instagram account. And so that's where a lot of things go out first, especially in my Instagram stories. But I'll be sure to keep you guys posted as we go along. And happy Valentine's Day. Let me just say that as well. And thank you. Thank you so much for your trust. Synchronicity University is live. It's in full effect. It is going on right now, the winter session. It's been so much fun. Thank you to all the students out there. Uh, and so earlier today, we had Jupiter in aspect uh, and transit. So we were looking at when Jupiter is speaking to your natal planets, what does that mean, whether it's in your natal chart or by transit? So that class has already taken place live. If you joined us live, amazing. If you couldn't, you'll get the download. If you haven't registered, you can purchase the download. Next week, we'll be looking at lunar mansions. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That was a class requested by students. And lunar mansions um, have been an important part of astrological magic, certainly, but they help us to see the chart differently and with greater depth. So that's going to be a lot of fun to do. That is happening next week. So you can register for one class. You can get the whole package and get a discount. All of that is available at synchronicityuniversity.com. My two newest books. The first one is The Body and the Cosmos. The Body and the Cosmos debuted as a number one uh, Amazon new release in New Age Astrology. Thank you so much uh, for making that happen, for making that possible. And it is now available wherever books are sold. And I hope you absolutely love that. Now, my next book is Prayers to the Sky. Advanced copies have all been sent out. I know people have started getting them. They've started messaging me. I hope you absolutely love it. Prayers to the Sky is now available for pre-order on Amazon, and I will link to it in the description below. Now, I always like to give a free gift to people who do a pre-order, but I'm trying to figure out what that gift should be right now. Uh, if I'm gonna create something or if I'm gonna offer something that I've already done, and so uh, stay tuned for that. But if you do pre-order on Amazon, make sure that you uh, keep the receipt or forward us the receipt. You can go ahead and do that if you like and know that the book is launching on the 16th of March, on the 16th of March. And it is gonna be at that time that whatever the free offering is, it'll be something. And I hope that you love it. It'll be something good, I promise. Uh, but whatever that offering is, I'll let you know, like even before we get there, even before we get to that uh, that date of the launch date, and um, and I hope you love it. I hope you absolutely love it. I hope you love the book, Prayers to the Sky, which is uh, looking at the planets in terms of their myth, in terms of forging a personal connection to the astrological planets and to experience them within by exploring the origin myths of these different planets, particularly the Greek origin myths, is what I was especially interested in. 
And there are also very practical steps in here. There's a little bit of an overview of astrological magic as well. And so a lot of the wisdom that I have shared in my most popular classes uh, with Synchronicity University in astrological magic, you can find some of that in this book. Uh, but also my hope is that this is ultimately a guide to help you to connect with the divine energy that you are an expression of. So that's prayers to the sky. Uh, Amazon pre-orders are available now. Live events. I've got a bunch of live events coming up this spring uh, that I'm really so very excited about. At the end of March, I will be in Turkey, uh, in Istanbul. I'll be back in Istanbul uh, as part of a wonderful weekend conference that is going to be taking place the last weekend of March with some of my friends who are going to be joining me, uh, people that I've known, people that I love as well. Amazing world-class astrologers are going to be there uh, with me teaching in this special event in Istanbul. After that, I go straight to Bangkok, Thailand, one of my very favorite places in the world. I really like Turkey too, I have to say. I love Istanbul and I love Bangkok as well. And so it's so great on this trip, I get to go to a couple of my very favorite places on the planet. But yes, I will go to Bangkok. I have a whole weekend uh, worked out there. There's a uh, talk in the evening. There's full day workshops as well. And it's all centered around the theme of astrology and holistic health. A lot of the uh, things that I share in the body and the cosmos are actually being taught as part of this astrology weekend taking place in Thailand the first weekend of April. And then it'll be May before my schedule gets kicked up again in a very big and wonderful way. I'm going to four different uh, events, four different cities around the world. And in, in a way, this spring, I'll definitely be around the world. Um, but it starts out in early May. I will be in Costa Rica as part of Astrology Rising, CostaRica.com. This is an event hosted by Kai Pacha. He is a, a brilliant force here on YouTube, and it features some of the most incredible astrologers in the world today, including one of my very favorite people, Rick Levine. Uh, we have Maurice Fernandez, Sol Janison, Timothy Hallrin, Ari Wolf, Christina Claudel, uh, and Julia Simas. I hope I got everybody there. I think I said Maurice Fernandez. He's amazing. He's a, a bucket of wisdom. And of course, Rick Levine, he's just so amazing. And Kai Pacha, of course, so amazing as well. So astrologyrisingcostarica.com. We are going to have an entire resort to ourselves. All astrologers, there's a full schedule. All of that is available on the official website, uh, astrologyrisingcostarica.com. And then from there, I will be in Toronto in the middle of May. That's with Astrology Toronto. And then Memorial Day weekend, I will be in Seattle with the Norwalk Conference. Now, as I'm recording this, they're saying there are only 40 tickets left, only 40 registrations left. So if it is that you would like to join us uh, as part of this incredible conference, Norwalk, in Seattle, I would encourage you to... Um, Take a step now because it is expected to sell out as it does every year. And then after that, I'll be heading to Las Vegas, hosted by the Stargazers group out there, the NCGR Stargazers group in Las Vegas. I'll be back in Vegas, uh, one evening talk on the last Tuesday of May. And then that weekend, the last Saturday, there will be a full day workshop. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. Lots of astrology, lots of hugs. I'll have a small number of books as well uh, to sign. And um, I just think that it's such a privilege to share my love of astrology and to connect with all of you in person. It's a privilege to connect online as well and, uh, and to have your trust and to learn from each other and to just enjoy, to just enjoy ourselves. That is what I think all of these live events are going to do. And then in September, I don't have anything until September. In September, I will be in Colorado as part of the ESAR conference. And then I will think about where I'm going next. But until then, I'm like, I would like to not think about that just yet. I'm looking forward to the summer, hanging out with Biggie, 
uh, Biggie should be in the thumbnail. He decided he didn't want to be on camera for the actual video, and that's okay. Uh, but it is really good to be back uh, at home in Cancun. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your trust in all of it. It just means so much to me. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.